all data are not alike. All right, so in this video, we're going to discuss the idea that, hey, data is not all homogeneous. It's not all the same, right? So sometimes data involves numerical values, right? So if your data is numeric in nature, we're going to say it's quantitative. And then broadly speaking, there's another type of data, data that does not involve numbers, and we'll call that qualitative, right? So we just took the whole big universe of data and said, hey, we can just kind of split it into two groups. Stuff that has numbers, that's quantitative. Think quantity, quantitative, right? And then qualitative, qualitative is like a characteristic, right? That doesn't involve numbers, right? So it could be the color of something or the name of something. Those are characteristics. It could be something like uh, on a driver's license, we have, you know, a classification of sex and eye color, right? Those things are qualitative in nature. We also have height on a driver's license. Now height would be quantitative because it's a number, right? Okay, so we split kind of data into two broad categories, numbers and then stuff that isn't numbers, right? So stuff that's not numeric. And then you have discrete data versus continuous. And this is a subdivision of quantitative data. So numerical data either comes in discrete or continuous varieties, right? And so when you think discrete, you wanna think of counting something, right? So numbers that are obtained from counts. That's the easiest way probably to think about it. The definition of something that's discrete though is the idea that there are gaps or places or values that cannot be achieved between any two achievable values. So here's an example with books. What if I said I was going to look at each student's book bag and count how many books they're carrying with them to class today? Well, either you have no books in your book bag or you have, say, five books in your book bag or two books or one book. But it's impossible to have pi amount of books in your book bag, right? Nobody's carrying around 3.14 books in their book bag, right? That doesn't make sense. So the fact is, is that discrete measurements or counts or values have gaps between them, right? So you might be able to have three books in your bag or four books in your bag, but you can't have pi amount of books in your bag. That makes no sense. It's not logical, right? Now think about continuous data. That's a little bit different. You probably want to think of measurements in this case. So anything that's like a height, a weight, a distance, a volume, right? Time, all those things can be measured, usually with a measuring device, and those things produce continuous data values. What I mean by continuous in this case is that between any two achievable values, you can have any decimal or fraction value in between those, and it makes perfect sense. So for example, if I said to you that I was going to have three ounces of medicine, or perhaps four ounces of medicine, I could also say that I'm gonna have 3.14 ounces of medicine, right? I could have pi amount of medicine. medicine. Of course, pi is non-repeating and non-terminating, but you know, I could have some approximate amount that's close to pi, right? Amount of medicine, right? Because there's no reason why I can't take a fraction of an ounce, right? I can drink a fraction of an ounce of a fluid, and it's perfectly fine. It's perfectly logical to say that, right? I could say that my commute to work is 3.145 miles, right? I don't have to have either a three mile commute or a four mile commute to work, right? So the fact is I can achieve any decimal or fraction in between those distances, right? Somebody in my class could be 67 inches tall or five foot seven. Somebody else could be 68 inches tall. I could certainly though have somebody in between those two heights, right? There's no reason why you can't have somebody who's 67 and a half inches tall. It's perfectly reasonable, right? So the fact of the matter is continuous data doesn't have those gaps between the data values, right? There are no places in between two data values that are not achievable, right? So that's the mark of continuous data. So why is this stuff important? Because it turns out there are some statistical methods that are appropriate for continuous data and some that are appropriate for discrete data. And you wouldn't want to mix those methods with the wrong kind of data, right? And with computers today, it's very easy to do those kind of mistakes where you enter data that's discrete into a, in a procedure that involves or requires continuous data, right? So when we make those mistakes, oftentimes a computer will not catch it for us. We have to know better to avoid those kind of errors. That's why this stuff kind of matters. Okay, let's go on to... Some examples then. So which of these are discrete, which are continuous? So here are some examples of discrete data. Again, try to think about how the data was obtained. Was it counted? Do we count something? Or did we actually whip out a measuring device and measure something, right? So the number of chairs in a room. Well, the number of chairs in a room, you know, again, you would count how many seats there are, how many chairs there are. And again, it makes no sense to say a pi amount of chairs, right? That's sort of ridiculous. So in that case, that would be discrete. The number of people who purchase a ticket to see a new Sony movie release. Again, you could have you know a million people see it. You have a million and one people see it, but you can't have a million point seven five people see the movie, right? It makes no sense, right? You can't have a fraction of a person see a movie. Either the person has seen it or they haven't. They can't have a fraction of them see it. Um, number of imperfections on a disc. Again, if you're just counting up the number of imperfections, again, you know, there's no notion of having pi amount of imperfections, right? That's you know. Silly. It's either you have three scratches or four scratches, for example, right? 
Um, there's no way to have 3.14 scratches. All right, let's think about the continuous examples, the weight of an apple. You put an apple on a scale, you get a weight that could be any fraction of a gram, right? Or any fraction of a pound, right? It doesn't have to be a whole number. It could achieve any decimal or fraction, really. It's only limited by your, what, measuring device or maybe some physical limitation in the universe that says you can only have so many decimal places or something. But, you know, that's beyond the scope of our course. The general idea is the fractions and decimals here, depending on the, the level of accuracy of your measuring device, could go on for certainly two or three decimal places. All right, length of a commute. Length of a commute you know, how far you travel to and from campus could be any fraction or a decimal. And if you think about how you would measure that, or you'd have to use a measurement device that kind of reminds you that you're not counting the distance, but you're measuring it, right? The height of a woman, again, you know, you get a ruler out or a yardstick or something and measure their length or height in this case. And that is, of course, going to produce a continuous answer or con continuous result. The person is maybe five foot seven. Her neighbor could be five foot six and a half inches, right? Or six and three quarters of an inch. Decimals and fractions, perfectly logical in that scenario. The volume of soda consumed. Again, any fraction of an ounce or any fraction of a liter can be consumed. So let's take a look at a couple more examples. Some people have trouble with this, so it's worth looking at at least a couple more. So it says a researcher will record the depth of a lake every week for five weeks to track the changes. The resulting measurements that you have or the resulting observations, would they be discrete data or continuous data? Or perhaps neither, right? Well, I'm going to get rid of the neither option because the depth is certainly going to be a number, right? And then I want to think about how did they get the number. They didn't count how deep the lake was, right? They measured it probably with some kind of measuring device, maybe like a really long ruler, right? And of course, they're not going to use a ruler, but, you know, you could think about that. They might use something that's close to it, the idea of a ruler, right? So the idea of that is then it's probably a measurement. Any fraction or decimal of a, of a foot or a meter would be reportable there. So I think that it's continuous. Okay, if you look at the next example, it says a researcher will record the number of clicks an advertisement receives each day on a popular social media platform. A uh, number of clicks is a count. You'd count how many clicks were received. It makes no sense to say something received 3.14 clicks, for example. So pi amount of clicks is illogical. Again, it seems like the hallmark of discrete data. You're counting up the thing, right? That's how you're getting the measurement. You're counting something. You're counting how many clicks. And there's no decimals or fractions in between that are achievable. It again, sounds like we're talking about something that's discrete.